Hi students, welcome to e-Padasala. Today we will discuss the topic principles of planning and housing standards. Now for, we will see the brief introduction about it. Today's home play a cru crucial role in our lives, perhaps more than at any other time in history. It not only shelter and protect us from physical harm, but also nurtures our growth, enhances our development, insulates us from stress of outside world. Yes. So, a house is a shelter consisting of walls, floors, roof, doors, windows, etc. in which human beings live. In the house, family members enjoy all the happiness, affections and love each other, health and ease of comfort, entertainment, social activities and indulgence of hobbies. So, in this topics, mainly we discuss about the planning objectives, factors influencing life space, principles of planning the house and housing standards. First, we will see the planning objectives. The basic objectives of planning of building is to arrange all the units of building and all the floors and at level according to the air functional requirement make best use of space. Second one is gives comfortable support thereby fulfilling its requirement of utility. Third one is it gives pleasure when seen or touched if it is beautiful. Then final one is it suits the individual or group if it has character. Next we will see about the factors influencing the life space. In order to understand personality and culture in relation to particular group of individuals, we generally list a number of factors. Some of them are climate, location, mobility, people, lifestyle, psychology, taste and financial limit. First one is climate. A house can be designed and constructed to maximize or, or minimizing the effect of climate. It is possible to create an atmosphere of warm or cold, snugness or airiness. The thick rug and the comfortable built-in seating contribute to the sense of snugness. The fireplace too plays a role in keeping the occupants warm. Windows can be oriented to collect warm or provide ventilation. Floors and wall materials can be selected to store natural solar heat or to insulate against cold. Then we will see the second factor, location and orientation. The importance of location and orientation lies in the way climate can affect the architectural design of home, calling for more or less insulation, fewer or more windows, a pitched or domed or flat roof and the interior choice of the materials, colors and furniture arrangements. Whether the house is in the country, town or city will have its own character. A city apartment occupied on a permanent basis, relative expensive furnishings or finishes for decoration. Then next important factor is mobility. Mobility means movement of the population from one place to another and it depends upon the nature of work. One may have to transfer from his job every few years. In these cases, they should take careful planning for the house. For example, possess lightweight furniture and repair the worn-out deal from for the tenant. Then next one is people. The people who live in the home are most important planning factor. The number, ages, sex, size, activities and relationships of people who comprises the household must be in primary factor in order that the special needs and interests of each individual. The next factor is lifestyle. Lifestyle is the amount of time devoted to various activities in the home. It includes entertainment habits, large or small formal or informal gatherings of friends or relatives, type of social activities such as meals, music, games and the location of these activities within the home. The well-planned space will provide for which one of these variables dominates their lifestyle. Then psychology. Psychologist Robert Sommer has studied the effect of the physical environment upon the attitudes and behavior of the people who use it. A space should contribute positively to the comfort and efficiency of the inmates. Often people have the psychological effect of glastrophobia and agoraphobia. People will have the fear of enclosed space called glastrophobia. Claustrophobia people also feel great and anxiety in small rooms. They always like yeah, open spaces. People will have the fear of open space called agoraphobia. In the absence of wall, other confirming fixtures, the agoraphobia experiences the feeling of insecurity. They always like yeah, enclosed space. Such factors are need consideration in planning the life space for many people. The next factor is taste. Taste is defined as particular likes and dislikes of an individual. It is a familiar to us from everyday experiences. 
A preference for chudidar over sari, use of laver saving devices instead of traditional ones, having attached bathrooms other than having separately. Taste is perhaps the single most important factor in determining what your life space will look like. Then final factor is financial limits. Both human and financial resources should be taken into account during planning the house. The present position can help to decide this factor. The individual skills, hobbies and creative abilities should also be taken into consideration. Materials should be related to provide a balance between care required and aesthetic qualities desired. The next topic is principles of planning the house. Architects often use the word plan to meet the horizontal representation of area which is commonly known as floor plan. Such plans usually source walls as thick lines, windows as thin lines, doors as a blank space. Complete plans should show the direction in which doors swing and also the location of the electrical outlet. As a general rule, the shape of the plan is governed by the climatic condition of the place, whether compact or closed or extended or opened. Whatever the plan, certain principles which govern the theory of planning are common to all the building. These principles are aspect, prospect, privacy, grouping, roominess, furniture requirement, sanitation, flexibility, circulation and practical consideration. First we will discuss about the principle aspect. Aspect means peculiarity of the arrangement of doors and windows in the external walls of the building which allows the occupant to enjoy the natural gifts such as sunshine, breeze, scenery etc. Aspect is the very important consideration in planning as it provides not only comfort and good environment to live in but from hygienic point of view also. Room which receives light and air from a particular side is said to have aspect of the direction. From this angle the following aspects for different rooms are preferred. For kitchen, east aspect. For dining room, south aspect. For drawing and living room, south aspect or southeast aspect. For bedroom, southwest aspect or west aspect. For veranda, southwest aspect or west aspect. For a reading room, stores, classrooms, studios, stairs, etc. North aspect. It is clear that a kitchen should be in east aspect so that the morning sun would refresh and purify the air and keep the kitchen cool during the remaining period of the day. A dining or drawing and living room should have a south aspect or southeast aspect. The sun is towards the south during winter and more deviated towards the north during summer. Similarly, the bedroom should have west aspect or southwest aspect since the breeze required in summer, believably from west side only. But the veranda, a gallery or some such sun shading device must be provided on the side so as to protect the structure from the hot afternoon sun. Hence, reading room, stores, stairs, studios, classrooms, etc. are placed towards the north. The second most important principles of planning the house is prospect. Prospect is the impressions that house is likely to make on person who looks at it from the outside. Therefore, it includes the attainment of pleasing appearance by the use of natural beauties, disposition of doors and windows and concealment of some undesirable views in a given outlook. Prospect and aspect both demand disposition of doors and windows. Then third most important principles of planning the house is privacy. Privacy is the one of the most important principles in the planning of building of all types in general and residential building in particular. Privacy requires consideration in two ways. First one is privacy of one room from another. Second one is privacy of all parts of the building from the neighboring building, public streets and byways. Privacy of the former type is attained by carefully planning the building with respect to grouping or disposition of doors or mode of hanging doors, provision of small corridor or lobby etc. This can also be achieved by planning screens and curtains. Privacy of the latter type is easily secured by careful planning the entrance and streeting it with trees or creepers trained on the trellis. Privacy is of the supreme importance in bedrooms, water closets, urinals, bathrooms, etc. Fourth principle is grouping. 
grouping means the disposition of various room in related positions so that all the rooms are placed in the proper correlation of their functions and in proximity with each other. For example, in residential building, dining room must be close to the kitchen. At the same time, kitchen should be away from the drawing or the main living room. Otherwise, kitchen smells and smokes would be distracting. Services must be nearer to and independently accessible from every bedroom. The water closet, urinals, etc. must be far away from the kitchen and dining room and so on. And the fifth principle is roominess. Roominess refers to the effect produced by deriving the maximum benefit from the minimum dimensions of the room. It is accomplishment of economy of space at the same time, avoiding cramping of the plan. It is essential, particularly in the case of residential buildings, where large storage space is required to make maximum use of every nook and corner of the built-up area of the building before making an additional to the plinth area. For Giving better impression of roominess, the following points should be kept of use. A great skill should be exercised in making suitable arrangements of the rooms, doors and passages for accommodation in such a way that the utility, liability, privacy and extension appearance are not adversely affected. A square room appears relatively smaller in size and utility than a rectangular room of the same area. A small room within Ordinately high walls appears relatively smaller than its actual size. The disposition of doors, windows and cupboards such that they do not cross cut this room area and obstruct the placing of furniture adds to roominess. The design of elements such as floors, walls, ceilings, lift etc. should be such as to create a sense of space beyond its actual dimensions. The next principle is furniture requirement. The functional requirement of the room or an apartment governs the furniture requirements. This is an important consideration in planning of buildings. In the residential building, a room whether intended for a bedroom or kitchen or drawing room, the architect should take into account the furniture position of all types like to be accommodated so that the doors, windows and circulation space do not prevent from placing of sufficient number of furniture pieces. Sanitation. Sanitation consists of providing ample light, ventilation, facilities for cleaning and sanitary convenience in the following manner. First is light. Light has twofold significance. Firstly, illuminates and secondly from hygienic point of view. Light in interior buildings may be provided by natural or artificial lighting. A room should get sunlight as long as and as much as possible. Vertical windows are therefore better than horizontal ones. Then next is ventilation. It is a supply of outside air, either positive ventilation or by infiltration into the building. Good ventilation is an important factor conducive to comfort in buildings. Poor ventilation or lack of fresh air in building always produces headache, sleepiness, inability to fix attention, etc. Ventilation may be natural or mechanical. In natural ventilation, the outside air is supplied into the building through windows ventilators, other openings. In mechanical ventilation, the outside air is supplied either by mechanical devices such as fan or by infiltration by reduction of pressure inside due to exhaust of air or by a combination of positive ventilation and exhaust of air. Good ventilation is generally achieved by placing the windows, doors and ventilators such that they catches as much of breeze as possible. Cleanliness and sanitary convenience. Though the general cleaning and upkeep of the building is the responsibility of the occupants, but even then some provisions to facilitate cleaning and prevention of dust are necessary in planning. The floors as far as possible should be non-absorbed in surface, smooth and proper slope should be given to facilitate washing with suitable outlets in the walls. Prevention of dust accumulations is essential. Dust helps the growth of bacteria and spread of diseases. Sanitary conveniences include provision of bathrooms, water closets, lavatories, latrines, urinals, etc. in building. The next is flexibility. Flexibility means planning rooms in such a way which though originally designed for a specific purpose may be used to serve other overlapping purpose also as and when desired. This is particularly important for designing the houses for middle class families. A house planned on scientific principles within a small space must provide the various similar activities such as listening to radio, child homework, entertaining guests and festive occasions such as holiday dinners, birthday parties, wedding banquets and so on. 
One is to combine the drawing room and the dining room by a removable partition or a screen between them and the other ways is to dine in open air. Next principle is circulation. Circulation means internal thoroughfares or the movement space provided on the same floor either between the rooms or within the rooms called horizontal circulation and between the different floors through stairs or lifts called the vertical circulation. Passages or corridors, halls and lobbies serve the purpose of horizontal circulation whereas for vertical circulation normally stairs or staircase, electrical lift, ramps etc. are the means of access to different floors. Then final principle is practical consideration. The following practical consideration should be given due consideration in the planning of building. The first one is strength and stability of the structure coupled with convenience and comfort should occupy the first place of importance in planning. The second is simplicity and effect of strength lend a lasting beauty and mobility to the building. The third one is it should be remembered that a building or a house is the immovable property and is built to last for several generations. One has therefore no right to practice false economy by erecting a weak structure. Then final one is while planning it is necessary to keep provision for either adding a wing or extending some part of the house without dismantling. So next we will discuss about the housing standards. The role of housing standard is to ensure that housing is safe to live in and that owners carry out their legal responsibilities to maintain their property. The Bureau of Indian Standard is the national standard body of India established by the Bureau of Indian Standard Act 1976 formerly known as ISI. Having realized the importance of building bylaws, government departments, municipal bodies and other construction agencies, the national building code has been established by the Bureau of Indian Standard. It is prepared to unify the building regulations through the country. The National Building Code of India is elaborate building code and a national to give guidelines for regulating the building construction activities. Local authority in housing standards. <laughs> a local authority is the body created by law and it has to carry out various functions and obligations in connection with community life. One of the important duty of the local authority is to frame suitable building bylaws and to provide suitable machinery for its successful implementation. For this purpose, it should form a department to receive the plans of proposed buildings. The department checks every detail on the plan and defects if any pertaining to the prevailing bylaws are pointed out for rectification. Only those plans are approved which comply with the requirement of prevailing bylaws. The approval of plan means the acceptance of local authority of the following requirements only. First one is arrangement of stairs, lift, corridors, doors, windows and parking heighting of building and its various stories. Then minimum requirement of high rise building or low rise building as the case may be. Minimum requirements of sanitary facilities. Then minimum requirements with respect to area of rooms. Permissible built up area, permissible FSI, permissible open space and setback, permissible use of building and provision for light and ventilation principles underlying building bylaws. The broad principles to be observed while framing the building bylaws for any locality can be summarized as follows. Classify the building with the units as the family and mentioning the requirements accordingly. Classifying the rooms according to the use and then mentioning minimum standard of each room with respect to size, height, floor area, ventilation and light. Controlling the height of compound wall and location of compound gates. Controlling the height of structure and putting maximum limit of height in certain zones. Controlling the area of projections in the marginal space insisting suitable FSI. Insisting upon suitable arrangements with respect to drainage and water supply. Making compulsory the appointment of licensed architect or engineers for work for the specified nature and magnitude. Making compulsory to construct the buildings with the materials and the workmanship as per standard specifications. Mentioning the light plants, setbacks and marginal spaces. Mentioning the minimum size of plots, their dimensions and frontage etc. Building bylaws for residential areas. The brief descriptions of all the possible building bylaws to be framed for residential areas of your typical town planning schemes are mentioned below. The content and provisions may be alerted to suit the local requirements. 
following are the important building bylaws. Permissible size of plots 200 meter square for one family units, 300 meter square for two semi detached family units, 665 meter square for ownership plots. Built up area the FSI shall be 1 with maximum up to 0.4 on ground floor. Margins the margins and roadside and adjacent properties shall be respectively 4.5 meter and 3 meter. For plots having areas less than 300 meter square, there will be respectively 3 meter and 2 meter. Area of rooms table shows the minimum areas of various rooms. First, living room, bedroom, drawing room, sitting room, ladies' room, dining room, study room. Minimum area requirement is 9 meter squared. Then, storeroom, kitchen, 5 meter squared. Bathroom, dressing room, pump room, water room, cold room. Minimum 1.35 meter squared and maximum 4.5 meter squared. Water closet and urinals 0.81 meter squared. Then plinth height. It shall be 45 centimeter above the road level or plot level, whichever is higher. Then height of floors. The minimum height shall be as follows: 2.1 meter bathroom, water closet, pump room, cold room, and water room. 2.7 meter floor height on each floor. The maximum height of floor shall not be more than 1.25 times of the minimum height. Then projection in margins. Following projection in the marginal space shall be permitted. Canopy of 3 meter with above 2.5 meter from ground level. Gallery of maximum with 1.2 meter at floor levels. Stairs attached to building and open to sky with minimum width of 90 centimeter. Weather set of maximum width 50 centimeter at lintel level. Cellar. The permission to construct cellar shall be granted with the following restriction. Height is 2.4 meter. Stair width is 90 centimeter. Ventilation 1 tenth of the floor. Then loft. The provision of the loft shall be permitted in kitchen and storeroom. The maximum width of the loft shall be one third that the width in the directions. The maximum height above the loft shall be 1.5 meter and bottom of loft shall be at minimum height of 2.1 meter from floor level. Lift. For buildings have more than 3 floor, the lift shall be provided at the rate of 1 lift for 20 family units. The lift shall be provided from ground floor and its minimum capacity shall be of 6 persons. If the height of the building is 25 meter or more, at least 2 lifts shall be provided. Ventilation. All rooms except cold room, water room, store room and car cage shall have at least one side adjacent two open spaces. The area of windows and ventilators excluding frames shall be at least one tenth of the floor area of the room. Stair. The minimum width of the stair shall be 90 cm and it shall be made of fireproof construction. The pitch of stair shall be within 30 degree to 40 degree angle. The stair gabin shall not exceed 11 meter square in area. Minimum requirements. One family unit shall be provided with the minimum requirement of one living room, one kitchen, one bathroom and one water closet. Water supply. For building having a second floor, the overhead tank of 1800 liters and underground tank with pumping set shall be provided. Drainage. The longitudinal section of sewer having diameter 15 centimeter or more shall be given and the feasibility of drainage connections with public drainage lines shall be ascertained. Where no public drainage lines exist, the soak pit or septic wells shall be allowed. Then compound wall and gate. The maximum height of compound wall on roadside shall be 1.5 meter and on other sides it shall be 1.8 meter. The gates of compounds shall open inwards. Structural aspects. The design of RCC members, steel members and timber members shall be submitted by competent licensed structural engineers. The walled structure shall be allowed up to ground first and second floors. 
for structure above the two floors only framed structures shall be permitted. Specifications for materials and workmanship. The construction work shall be carried out with materials of good quality and superior workmanship and undertaking to execute the work with standard materials and good workmanship shall be given by the owner and the engineer. Then we will see the conclusion. The provision of good housing is to be accomplished by various means and measures. It is not enough to provide structurally stable structure as houses, but they must be so located and designed that they afford convenience, amenity, health and social life of the community. So before planning the housing, uh, one should kept in the important aspects of principles, factors and accordance with the housing standards for better living.